Okay, cell biology fans, I wanted to finish up what we hadn't finished in exocytosis. We had begun talking about regulated exocytosis. Normal exocytosis, constitutive exocytosis, is the process that happens 24-7, 365. And that involves the formation of proteins and lipids that the cell needs on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. The, they are the things that every cell makes all the time because that's what you need, that's what a cell needs to survive. Regulated exocytosis, are these are events that occur due to some signal that happens. And the best examples we have are the process used by mast cells, and mast cells release histamine when you have an allergic attack. Uh, neuronal cells release neurotransmitters at the right time at the right place. And beta cells of the pancreas, which we've talked about sort of at nauseum, uh, that involves the secretion of insulin or glucagon. Uh, excuse me, beta cells are only insulin, but the alpha cells of the pancreas are glucagon. So the signals that uh, result in regulated exocytosis can be the binding of a ligand to a cell surface receptor that then leads to an intracellular signaling. Um, it could be the uh, interaction of two cells with one another, or it could be the um, formation of some type of bond that activates something in the cell to then cause regulated exocytosis. Uh, in the case of mast cells, it is the binding of an antigen. So an antigen binds to a receptor on mast cells, and that causes the release of histamine. All of these little blue packets in here those are packets, they're vesicles filled with insulin, and in this mast cell they will be dumped out immediately because the receptor is sitting there waiting to bind that antigen. The antigen could be a piece of pollen, it could be uh, cat dander, it could be anything that causes that allergic reaction. In neuronal cells, it's the neurotransmitters that pile up at the uh, nerve terminus, and in beta cells of the pancreas, right, it's the hormone insulin that's produced and is, it's really uh, produced in large quantities and secreted through vesicles. The process that's used in neuronal cells involves uh, calcium fluxes, and it really is the internalization of calcium from the nerve terminus. So at the nerve terminus, do you remember me telling you that the signal goes down the the axon. The axon is made up of myelin sheaths, and the signal goes from one node of Ranvier to the next, and when it reaches the nerve terminus, it causes an influx of calcium into the cell, and that calcium then regulates the fusion of vesicles at the plasma membrane and releasing neurotransmitters out here into the synaptic cleft. This image is an EM image showing the release of insulin from the plasma membrane and I, I really love this EM image because this is showing insulin as a vesicle. So on the left hand side you see the vesicle and it's fusing with the membrane and I hope that you can see that you actually have the two membranes opposed to one another here. They're being bound by snares and eventually what happens is the snares uh, will do that hemifusion event that I told you about and fuse and here, right, the, the membrane has now fused and this releases this ball of of insulin. Is this one molecule of insulin? No, this is a bunch of stuff being secreted, a ton of insulin. Uh, an individual protein is not that size. These are huge amounts of insulin that are being secreted in response to glucose in the bloodstream. Pancreatic cells have to actually see that glucose and what they do if you're a pancreas cell, excuse me, a pancreas cell sits in the pancreas and it has a receptor, it actually has a uh, gluc glute molecule that sits on its surface and it's GLUT2 uh, and the GLUT2 sees when you have glucose floating around All right, I'm not going to draw this very well but right, you know glucose is a molecule that looks something like this 
So when glucose is around, this goes into the pancreatic beta cells and it causes the secretion of insulin out of those cells. These are some beautiful images of mast cells. The previous image that you saw was staining with H and E. H and E is hematoxylin. And hematoxylin um, binds, so the blue designates uh, basic compounds and histamine is a basic compound. In this EM image you can really clearly see that this cell is nothing more than a package of vesicles. The nucleus is shown but other than that you can hardly see anything else in the cell. There's this area over here and this is probably uh, one of the areas in the cell that is doing protein synthesis. Uh, let's zoom in on that and see what it looks like. Uh, a little hard to tell. It gets pixelated when we're that small. So I do believe that almost the entire cell is made of vesicles. And when the cell, when a, an antigen binds to the cell surface, it causes these vesicles to fuse to the membrane. And you can see over here that tons of these vesicles have fused. And the membrane now is, is kind of crazy. It's got a ton of surface area. Some of these vesicles are fused. Some of them are in the process of fusing. And, and the cell is actually remaking. It's beginning to remake new vesicles to fill its histamine stores. Another directed response that is uh, really important, and this is a, a regulated directed, directed response, so regulated directed response, is uh, what happens in cytotoxic T cells. So your immune system has T cells, and there's two types. Cytotoxic T cells are all about killing other cells. And you can imagine... All right. If you activate a cytotoxic T cell, you don't want it to just kill everything around it because you might have cells that are important for you. You want it to be specific. And this involves the directed response. So whatever cell, so this actually happens to be the T cell, and this is the target cell. Wherever these cells are touching, wherever the cells are touching, that's where the vesicles will bind and fuse to the membrane and release the contents into that other cell. So in this case you have, sorry about that, you have release of the cytotoxic compounds. In this one it's cytotoxic compounds and you can see that it's actually eating away. So all right, these are really fusing here now because this has all become dead material. So it's killing the cell that it's associated with. Really important that that doesn't happen everywhere, right? So if you were secreting over here and this cell was interacting in a tissue, these would be killing live cells, your live good cells. You only want it to be at the directed uh, cell, the target cell. And the last of these examples is the synaptic vesicle, which we have touched on before. In this right EM image, you can see neurotransmitters, and in the neurotransmitters here, okay, I'm circling some of these vesicles that have neurotransmitters, they have little dots, and those little black dots are gold particles. And so the gold particles are used to... Uh, stain for particular molecules in cells. So this is a called an immuno gold labeling. And this is a form of EM that utilizes cells but also utilizes binding of a particle that has gold bound to it so that when the electrons hit the sample, they're going to hit the sample and if that whatever uh, the gold is bound to is somewhere in the cell. You'll, you'll come up with these very dark particles. So in this one they're standing for a particular neurotransmitter, let's just say acetylcholine. And you can see there are vesicles that have acetylcholine in them. Um, some acetylcholine looks like it's probably not in a vesicle, but I perceive that that is probably not necessarily true. Um, it just depends how these samples are processed. So the regulated 
portion of the synaptic vesicles is the influx of calcium. So calcium will come into the nerve terminus and the vesicles will come out. So you have the binding of the vesicles to the plasma membrane that causes the release of the neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft. And these actually end up getting retaken back up through the process of uh, endocytosis. And that's what clears the signal from the system. This is just a blow up of that image. And if you follow along, right, number one says you get delivery of these vesicles from the region of the body of the cell. Remember that the nerve cell is a polarized cell and that the membrane that's around the cell body is, is just like the, uh, sorry, that's a little just like the basolateral portion of the cell, whereas the uh, axon and the nerve terminus are the apical regions. So you actually have the directed transport of molecules from the basolateral region to the apical region of the cell for release at the nerve terminus. The uh, endocytic vesicle shown here can either go back through some sort of recycling compartment and then upon the, so you see here you have a concentration of neurotransmitters in vesicles either coming originally from the uh, body of the cell or after reinternalization. And these vesicles then will fuse at number six with the plasma membrane to release when an action potential causes the uh, influx of calcium into the cell. Okay? So those three examples of regulated exocytosis are just specialized forms of exocytosis. You're going to see we have three forms of endocytosis, and they're really all the endo, endocytic process, but there are special ways that this can happen. So these are the regulated exocytosis. 24-7, 365 days of the year, hours, every minute of every day, you are doing constitutive exocytosis. And that is the process where we make proteins and lipids that the cell requires for everyday use. Okay, I'll be posting another of these shortly, so have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Tuesday.